And today's Mint Mobile question asks a question about the current DCU and if it could have been a little bit different if Black Adam had turned out differently. Check it out. John, how's it going? This is me, Jamel from New York. Big fan of your show. I want to know, and I think I might know your answer, but I still want to know, hear it. People feel the need that if Black Adam has made a billion dollars in the successful box office, they would still continue the DCEU, the Snyderverse version of their DCEU universe and everything. If Black Adam became a billion dollars. But I feel like they might not continue it because they already have plans to be booted anyway, so it wouldn't matter if they made a billion dollars or not. But what is your point of view on that? You know, bring on the filthy. Thank you, man. All right, thanks a lot for calling that in. And yeah, listen, let's go back because I, it is really, really interesting. The whole Black Adam thing is a fascinating case study. I think that we are in movie punditry circle, circles are probably talking about for a lot of years. Not often have we had a movie that had such a long buildup because literally it was kind of in the talking stages for over a decade, announced for seven years, and then it finally came out with the de facto biggest movie star in the world in the lead it, with a really the right fitting character for him too with a Black Adam character. And quite frankly, I know the movie has its detractors and I have some problems with the movie, but I am unashamedly a fan of the film. I think it was fun. I had a good time watching the movie, even though, yes, it had issues, but it didn't make money. It made half of what Thor 4 did. Now, granted, Thor is a more established thing and all that kind of stuff, but still, it, it barely it didn't hit $400 million worldwide. And that became a problem. Now, and then they brought in Henry Cavill. They made big announcements that Henry Cavill's back and all this kind of stuff. He raises an interesting question because I think it sets up a, a lot of interesting dominoes that could fall. Let's say, for example, that Black Adam had come out and made billion dollars a billion dollars something that if i'm not mistaken only one dceu film had done and that was aquaman now joker also made a billion dollars that was outside of the dcu but in the dceu only one of their films managed to make a billion dollars that was at, uh, that was aquaman what if black adam had been the second would that have changed the course of history to where we are now, where James Gunn, Peter Safran come in, they're se seemingly doing a reset of the universe. Dwayne Johnson is no longer Black Adam. I don't think Black Adam's even going to be around for a while unless they decide to bring in a new Black Adam with Shazam 3, if they keep Shazam around, and there's been no official confirmation of that either. It's interesting, and I'm of two minds. On the one hand, I think a billion-dollar film is a billion-dollar film right? It's difficult to rationalize even to yourself, let alone to a board of directors or shareholders that, yeah, we're not going to work with the world's biggest movie star who just let, gave us a billion dollar film at the box office. Only the second one we've managed to do in over a decade. It's hard to convince yourself and the board and the shareholders that we're not going to do business with them anymore. We're, we're just not going to get into that. So that's the one thing. And they had invested so many years of getting that movie up and running and to only get the one movie, make a billion and then just move on from it seems odd. On the other hand, the historic problem of Warner Brothers ownership of DC, this is, goes back well before the David Zaslav and Discovery takeover. Hell, even before at t the traditional problem with DC at Warner Brothers has been being overly reactionary. Where instead of taking into account the long-term precedents they've seen, one thing good or bad happens and they're like, ooh, something bad just happened. Let's change all of our plans. Or ooh, something good happened. Let's change all of our plans. And it's like, just throw out the long set of criteria we've seen and let's just take this one moment that's happened let's change everything we're going to do that's been their problem and so part of me thinks that even if black adam had made a billion dollars that dc would have gone warner brothers dc would have said okay that's great and yay we made a billion dollars on that but we've had a 10-year history of this franchise not living up to its potential 10 years of it 
we've got to move on. Let's take the win. Let's celebrate what this did, but we need to move on because, hey, we had the world's biggest movie star and Dwayne The Rock Johnson starring in it. That would become their excuse. We had the world's biggest movie star. Of course, it made a billion dollars. And then they would move on. Here's what I think would actually happen, though. I think what actually would have happened would have fallen somewhere in the middle. I think that if Black Adam had ended up making a billion dollars at the box office, James Gunn and Peter Safran continue to come in and reset the DC universe. But as we've been seeing that the new DC universe is going to be, it's reset. And in any reset universe, some things are still going to look the same. Some things will look very different. I bet you the only difference would be that Black Adam and Dwayne The Rock Johnson would still be in it. It would maybe be a reset Black Adam with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It might be a different Black Adam than we saw in the Black Adam movie, but it's still Dwayne Johnson. Honestly, I think that's the only difference. I think they still move forward with the plans that they had. I think they still reset the DC universe. I think we still get that big project lineup that we got from them. The only difference would be is that they would continue to work with Dwayne Johnson in the role. So that's ultimately what I think think would happen, a lot of different possibilities. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia rob which way do you think it would have turned out i think you laid it out pretty well i mean i think that's exactly what would happen because you can't a billion dollar movie is still a billion dollar movie no one's gonna if you've had a billion dollar film you're not gonna not follow that up I mean, especially when you have Dwayne Johnson and somebody you've made a movie that people really like, and it's in the in the um, the DC pantheon. You're gonna you're gonna hang on to it. And by the way, with a with whatever this Flashpoint reboot ends up being, there's no way that you you couldn't have said, well, obviously this reboot didn't affect these characters. They're pretty much the same as they were. There's no reason why you can't say that they're just there. You know, if any, if anything, they, they it gives more possibilities to maybe soup up the Justice Society presence or something. You know what the reset does? The reset gives James Gunn and Peter Safran an open excuse to have Pierce Brosnan back as Dr. Fate. Yep. Because the events of Black Adam didn't actually happen, so he didn't die. He's still here. I would like that very much. I mean, they, they, and why not do that? I mean, they can they can say they they can do whatever they want. It's a, a fictional universe. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying. I think the real point of this is they can move ahead with their pantheon of characters. And by the way, I think that could be true if Jason Momoa comes back as Aquaman. I think exactly what you said. The events of the Aquaman that we've seen that was a different universe, but the Momoa yeah. moves forward and they do a different iteration of everything, and people will understand that. But what they really wanted to do was they wanted to make a cohesive background. Look, I think that what Zack Snyder did, he had Doomsday. He made an older Batman. He had Superman. There was all of these things that he kind of bogarted in his trilogy about the DC universe that they might have wanted to make different kinds of decisions because the Zack Snyder universe locked them into a certain vision. He did he did imagine the Justice League. So you're stuck kind of with all the, the iterations that we've seen and then what Patty Jenkins did with Wonder Woman and what James Wan did with Aquaman. But it still came down from this one man's vision of what these characters should look like. So that might not have been the direction they wanted to go. They might have wanted to make it brighter. They wanted to do everything different. But they were kind of locked into this. So what they've done is they've gone back and, nope, we're going to have Time, the timeline will change, the universe will change after whatever happens to the Flash, and we move forward the way we want. 
which means they can do anything. They can bring back Quero. I love the idea that they might bring back Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. He was great. Why not? You don't have to kill anybody. I never thought about that. Now I'm excited. You actually, I'm like, hmm. I, I, mean, I did really, really like the whole Justice Society in Black Adam. Yeah. I mean, the great. best part, the best part to me was still The Rock. The Rock was still yeah, the best yeah. part of the movie, but I loved that. I even, like, I, I really thought I would hate whatever, Wind Girl. What, what's Passing Wind Girl? What's her name? <laughs> Cyclone? I don't know. Cyclone. Yeah, I think that was it. Passing Cyclone wind. and Adam Smasher. Like, if you had told me going into that movie, if you told me going into that wind movie, girl. That, Passing wind that girl. there would be like a CW <laughs> teen romance right. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I would have hated that idea. Yeah, yeah. But watching it play out, it was warm and it was charming. And I will use the D word. It was delightful. I like. I would watch a Justice Society movie. I totally would. And maybe this will give them the excuse that they can bring them back. Uh, maybe. They, I, I love that idea. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think? Like, how do you think history would have unfolded differently had that Black Adam movie done what a lot of us thought a couple of years ago it would do, which is come out and make a billion dollars for the DCEU? Do you think it would have changed things? Do you think it would have changed nothing? Whatever you guys think, jump down into that comment section below and let us know your thoughts.